You're listening to Talking About the Blues Talk Radio, streaming live on MDO Radio Blues. What's going on, good folks? Yet again, you are blues, and we're talking about the blues podcast coming straight out of New York City, New York's number one blues podcast, streaming on MDORadioBlues.com. Today, our guest, Pittsburgh's Lady of the Blues, Miss Freddie, with Miss Freddie's Blues. How are you, sister? I am well, thank you. And hey, everybody out there, what's going on? <laughs> That's right. Okay, well, as you know, we talk about the blues, and you are Miss Freddie's Blues, and Miss Freddie has a blues band. So we're going to talk about a whole bunch of things this evening. But first, I would like to ask you the beginnings, the humble beginnings. Now, we... This was passed down generations because before it was like uh, a, of commercial value. This is this was our life and our family's life. But right. you know, besides you know, with that being said, please it, please share with us your introduction or or that epiphany. Would like wow, I'm the blues. I grew up here in the north. Thus, my parents were from the south, and my mom listened to the blues because uh, her father owned a juke joint down south really? and he also ran moonshine so i'm sure my grandfather you know if he was alive today he has some stories to tell oh yeah and my my dad you know he he loved his country music and um you know i was caught between the crossfire both of them and i'm like why are y'all listening to that and <laughs> you know <laughs> you didn't say that too loud you know in front of my mom because she's like you know that's the only kind of music um, mm. But uh, 20 years ago, I actually started getting into the blues music and researching, you know, the very first band that I was in. And um, I, I have a new appreciation in how it started and why it started and why it's, you know, the way it is. Mm. Um, you know, and especially hearing stories about, you know, um, what happened, period, like in my family and other people's families you know, down south and up here, up north. So I said, you know what, got to keep this going. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. We share journeys because mine is somewhat similar. But we want to talk about yours right now. So with that being said, now, you said that your grandfather actually owned the juke joint and sold moonshine. It gets no more blues than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the story that I... um. Yeah, that's the story that um, my mother didn't talk about it much. I, I don't know why, but, you know, um, yeah, I, I, I remember her saying that, uh, you know, the sheriff in the town was going to arrest my grandfather, mm. you know, um, put him in jail, you know, if he didn't share some of that money he was making. So, wow. my, you know, I guess my grandfather formed a pack and him and the sheriff were in cahoots and you know my grandfather ran the juke joint and you know ran the moonshine and um i'm sure was, he was uh, pol protected by the police after that he should have been he should i guess he was i i don't know my my mom didn't get into the uh you know the whole story and but it fascinated me because the first thing that came in my mind when i heard that is i would love to work for my grandfather <laughs> <laughs> But I didn't tell that to my mother. Of course I, not. Because you know, <laughs> she'd have looked at me like, no, you ain't. She says, I will whoop you so you can't see straight. Um, <laughs> Old school parents, and that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, you know, let, let's, let's, let's stay here for a second. Because you said something that um, is one of the reasons talking about the blues exists. You know, uh, we have generational history, but because of the circumstances we lived under, and when I say we, I mean our, our parents, our grandparents, our great grandparents and the like, certain things were shared, but a lot of things was mom's was the word, and it's not even the fact that they didn't want to pass down or share the history, but it was kind of the atmosphere what what right. what's your thoughts about that? Um, my thoughts about it, and, and I'm you know what, and I'll share this. I don't know if you remember, but my mother, I was really interested in 
black history. That's what we called it mm -hmm. growing up. And I didn't get that growing up in school when I was in elementary school, middle school, or high school. I didn't get that. No. So my mom, about when I was in middle school, went out and bought the illustrated Ebony had the um, of black history. That's right. And you know what? I'm going to tell you. I want to say, I'm not sure, don't quote me. Mm -hmm. I thought it was 26 volumes. You know I read every last one of them. Go ahead on. I was so enthralled about the African American history and what they went through in order for me to get to where I was at at that time and even today. Right. And and a lot of things, because um, I remember my mother, you know, she was talking with her friends and how they talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, they would sit outside and they would talk and, you know, um, and my mother was something else. May she rest in peace. I love my mother. But I'm like, wow. I'd have been your best friend. I would not have wanted to been on your bad side. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Down south, they all carried guns. Yes. And my, you know, it's I, I can appreciate that. You know, I remember a lot that I read in the history, and I'm going to tell you. I said, I swear, I was born in the wrong time period. I wish I was back then. <laughs> you know, just to I do. see the struggle, just to know what they went through. Mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just to know, because I know a lot of things they didn't talk about. A no. lot of things they did not talk about. And I don't know if that came from the fact of back in slavery days. Right. You know, you had to be hush-hush if you're trying to do something, if you're trying to make it to freedom. So I don't know if that mentality was just carried on. Um, I, I would, I, have, uh, I would, I would, um... I don't. I, I don't know how the word is. I would say. I would say that may be the case. You know, it's almost like the, those songs from that time was the passing on uh, uh, for us. If that makes any sense. Oh yeah, it makes a lot of sense because um, a few years back, I happened to go on YouTube and I typed in um, "black women in the '30s" or something like that. 30s, 40s, singing blues. Mm. Oh my gosh. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> Some of the things they were singing about, at first I was, you know, taken back by it. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me let me slow down for a minute. Yes. Uh -uh. This is what was going on. They had raunchy songs and it was very, very visual and very blatant. Yes, it was, but that's what was happening and that was how the mentality and the conversation went, mm. you know, so mm. I have an appreciation up to a point with, you know, this generation and it started like 20 years ago when they started out with the hip hop and the rap, they're talking about and they're describing in their own way of what's going on, what they see, what they feel, you know, and, right. and I tell people, I said, I appreciate you know, what's going on, what's happening, because everybody interprets everything on their own. And I'm telling you, we have such a rich history in music and blues. Yes. And it's my job to keep it going. Oh, absolutely. Because you know, I've been through some things that a lot of people are like, we're surprised you are just still like, how could you be so calm? I said, because it's not for me to be angry. Mm. Mm. It's not. I can't get my point across to you as a musician if I'm always constantly angry. Mm. I dig it. I dig it. Especially if you're not rapping. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, wait a minute. I tried it a couple of times at my um, at some of my shows, and people are like, "Well, that's interesting, Miss Freddie, but you need to leave that to the kids <laughs> or to the people that know what they're talking." About. I said. Yeah, y'all are right. <laughs> I was I was trying to incorporate something, but um, it's an appreciation. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, the reality of the situation, the the, the besides the fact that hip hop, rap, the entire culture of it, and and the musical style of it, and how it was developed, is literally the great grandchild of the blues. I would even go as far as say maybe the great great grandchild, but. These two musics, the blues, the spiritual, old Negro spirituals, not necessarily gospel, but old Negro spirituals, the blues, and hip-hop 
are, are oppressed black folk with no European influence other than oppression. <laughs> right. right, exactly. I mean, that's how it was described to me when I first started out singing blues. Mm. And my first band was Blues Music Works, BMW, like the car. Right. And our band leader, manager, he's a little older white guy who had played with Pine Top Perkins. And I'm telling you, to sit down and may he rest in peace, to sit down and listen to him. I, and I would tell him, I said, please don't take this wrong. Sure you ain't black you, <laughs> in your other life. He would laugh at me. He said, I have learned to embrace cultures and respect for them. He said, I'm not trying to be nobody else but me. But when it comes to respecting blues music, he said people really need to sit down and listen and shut yes, up. Yes, yes. Now, I'm, I'm happy with talking about this because it, it seems, and I spoke, I, I speak about this often with my guests, especially my African-American blues guests. And when I say blues, the artists. Because what I've found and what I've been told and what we've seen the, for the past 40 Maybe, yeah, 40, 50 years, since the 60s, I would say, the audience of the blues has been predominantly white. Right. Now, with what we're discussing and the confirmation from, I believe you said it was your manager, how, how do we, or how are you, better yet, how are you uh, making the point this is a history that you need to know because it's yours. Talking to the African-American community, that is. Right. The way I present myself, because it's I, the music that I choose to do, and I, and I arrange all the, you know, arrange the song list and everything for both my bands, mm. I'm actually telling a story. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling a story about my life or what's going on or what has happened. Mm. And a lot of people don't realize, people who follow me, I'm telling you, they, they realize it, they get it because they've been paying attention. Right. And it's not easy because sometimes, and, and I have to admit this as an artist, but, you know, one day, I, you know, I, somebody gave me a long talking to <laughs> <laughs> and they said, if you're going to be a musician, you stay true to yourself and don't do nothing else. Because if you do something else and you find one day you wake up and say, why? Right. What's the, what's the, what's the purpose of doing it? Right. 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 I dig and, it. And I have to stay true to that. It's, it's so important because I'm going to tell you, I noticed lately there's some young folks out there who I hear them doing like an old school song, for instance, something by Bill Withers mm. or something by B.B. King or something by Sarah Vaughan. I'm like, whoa. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm impressed. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. If I answer, you know, if I answer, it's just, it's about laying down the legacy and keeping right. it going. Absolutely, absolutely, and you know, not for nothing. You, we spoke earlier about the South and the Old South and how everybody carried pistols. I'm really still surprised to this day, and this may be an extremely controversial statement, but I, I'm so surprised how many Black people, African Americans, really, really um, ride for the Democratic Party. Because <laughs> our, our our country values, I, because my peoples are from the country, you know, both sides of my family. And my mama and uncle was born in Chicago. I'm, okay. You know, me and my siblings and cousins, we're all first generation New Yorkers. Everybody came from, the, you know, everybody had the blues uh, 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 journey across America, you know. Right, right. So, you know, I'm still trying to understand how, <laughs> how, how, how do we get hoodwinked into being Democrats? But you know what? Do you think you have an answer for that? I didn't want to take it too political, how, but I heard your response. I'm interested in hearing what you think about that. I, 
I don't know. And and I'm and I'm gonna tell you, um <laughs> you know, I never discuss politics with my friends because no but we never agree, but it's a good thing. Right. But I don't know how that has that has came about, whether it's either party. I I don't know. Um I think it's an American society thing. Mm. You know, I don't know if and, and I don't know I don't. I have my own thoughts, you know. Um, on why, because I grew up like that. That's mm. how my parents were, um, my grandparents were, mm. you know. So that's how I got into, you know, that whole political thing. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if it, if it means if you take the word democracy, okay, you're talking about freedom, you're talking about, you know, um, peace, mm-hmm. whatever it represents for people, um, so you kind of have to look at it as a whole. How are people seeing that? You know, just that word itself. Right, right. I dig it. Now, I I, I heard and watched your perform a couple of your performances. Voodoo lady. Um, a voodoo woman. Voodoo woman. <laughs> um, Etta James. Um, I rather go blind. I I was impressed. I was like, yeah, she's laying it down. <laughs> How do you choose uh, your songs? Um, I listen to a lot of music. You'd be surprised. I mean, day in, day out, whether I'm at work, home. Um, but I choose the songs once again because something, it's about my life. And, and I'm going to tell you, a lot of my fans out there, you know, God bless them. I have had people come to me and, you know, something may be going on or, you know, whatever. And it's like, oh, I heard this song. You know, I didn't like it at first, but wait a minute. Um, And then actually the people who laid down the music before, Mm -hmm. you know, like Etta James and Coco Taylor and um, Sarah Vaughn and Mm -hmm. Memphis Minnie and, you know, way back, Bessie Smith, Mm -hmm. Big Mama Thornton. Mm-hmm. You know, all those women that, um, and even women who are in blues today, you know, I look up to because they're telling a story. We have it hard still. Mm-hmm. In 2016, as a woman and singing blues, we still have it hard. And we have to, if you're going to do blues, you're going to have to run with the big dogs. You're going to have to do it. Yeah, that's right. I mean, um, I, I would say just as black folk in 2016, we still have it hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's a struggle. But, you know, um, my favorite song that, you know, Bill Withers says, Lean On Me, and I do that. You know, I have two bands. I have the acoustic, you know, trio, and mm-hmm. I have the full, the five-piece electric band. Mm. And I do Lean On Me, you know, because it's always something that I've heard of anybody's life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I, I don't know. And then I have a lot of originals, you know, that I, that have been put together for me, that were written for me. And um, because the people who have wrote those songs for me, they know me and they get me. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yes. They like, yeah, we, yeah, we know, we know how you're feeling. Oh, this song will fit you perfectly, you know. And you know, I have to get used to it. So it just kind of depends. It really does. I'm gonna be honest. It, it depends upon what's going on, but. I pride myself on, I never forget where I came from, and I never forget where the music came from. Right. So that helps me choose the music that I do. Right. So now, do you write any of your songs, or you, you know, because you, you said you arrange the majority of the, the, the pieces. So in, in the arrangements, do you write any of the lyrics as well? Um, I have written... I've written a couple songs, <clears throat> excuse me, and one of them, um, no, actually, I've written two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one based on a old woman in a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I could take a nursery rhyme and then talk about somebody, what they did, and the men, and I could do that. And then i written a song for a friend who passed away of pancreatic cancer a few mm. years back. Uh, Jim Weber, he actually, you know, he believed in what I did. He's the president of our Blues Society, Western Pennsylvania. Mm, okay. And uh, so I wrote These Are My Blues. And, you know, um, as far as arranging, I, I let my 
I let my guys do that. <laughs> okay. I just say, well, I want to sing this song this way, and I, I like it this way, and it, you know, and um, they take it from there. So it works. Mm, okay, okay. So now, are you? Have you ever incorporated? As, I mean, getting back to your grandfather's juke joint in Moonshine, have you ever incorporated that in any of the uh, performances or songs? I sing a particular song by one of my favorite blues ladies, Let the Juke Joint Jump. Mm. And I always, you know, give her high props every time I do it. And I don't know all of her life, her history, um, but she passed away in 2009, the day after my birthday, June 3rd. I was born June 2nd. Mm. But she's one of the she's one of the many reasons how I found you know the blues and listening to blues music and wondering about it and you know how can I take it further? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that's none other than Coco Taylor. Oh, uh, yeah, I, mean, I got I, that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love her. Oh, man. You know, when she was in Pittsburgh, I'm going to tell you, I wanted to call out from work so bad. My boss knew I liked Coco Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> she said, you better not call out, Fred. I'm like, oh. Mm. And, and I wish I had a, you know, because you never know. But Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I kind of do a number of songs, you know, keeping that in mind, where I came from and what happened before me. You know, like my mom used to sell uh, pop and beer, mm. you know, <laughs> and it's, you know, growing up, I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So we're our own store or something, or, you know, we're like a little joint, you know, here. <laughs> so, um, it's just very, yeah, it's, yeah, I do. I, I incorporate what I sing because of, you know, a lot of things that have happened um, in my family history. Okay. Well, with that being said, so you know what my next question is, right? Mm, try me. Okay. <laughs> Do you have the five piece electric to represent your mother and the three piece acoustic to represent your pops who like country music, even though country music is the blues? Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, <laughs> it's funny you should you should mention that. My dad never heard the um, the acoustic side of me. My dad heard the band. And I brought my dad to a couple shows, um, probably a couple years before he passed away. And he actually liked it. He oh. liked what I did. And I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> Duh, that's groovy. <laughs> yeah, he liked what I did. I was like, wow. My mom never heard the electric band, but she heard the acoustic side. Wow. And I'm going to tell you something. I strive to sing the blues because of this comment my mother made. She, I, I, she loved B.B. King. Mm-hmm. Nobody else. You, if you ain't got the blues like BB King, you just ain't no blues person. <laughs> That's how my mom thought. And see, I sang Stormy Monday because I knew that was one of her favorites by him. Mm -hmm. So when we were done and packing up. My mother said, "You know, I want you to come upstairs." She lived in a senior citizen. So I, you know, me and my guys, we went upstairs. You know, and she fed us, and she said, "I'm gonna tell you something." I said, "Yes, ma'am." She said, "That Stormy Monday." She said, "You sound like a jazz singer." I was crushed. I love jazz. Don't get me wrong, but I was crushed. Right, there is a My difference. Told me that. Yes, yes. She said you got to sing that song with some feeling, with some blues, like how BB King did. I said yes, ma'am. And ever since that day, I have strived to sell out blues. Mm. With my mother in the back of my head, standing behind me. <laughs> <laughs> That ain't how you sing blues. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. You got to feel them blues. You yes. Know? And yes, you do. Yes, but you see, do. You, you know, that's kind of the irony of not just life, of being an artist. Because that was actually, <laughs> she said, you sang it like a jazz singer. And it, the irony of that is, is this, it's extremely difficult to to sing like a jazz singer do you understand what i'm trying to get at that's not an easy way to sing <laughs> because right. you really have to have a real singing voice and understand technique you know not that you don't have to do you know those things for the blues but 
it's, it's like the balance between, you know, technique and knowing how to and, and, uh, fl- uh, uh, manipulate your voice and breath on different moments with, with blues is you, if you just got to feel it. And if you are off key, but they felt it. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, because I've sang jazz before. Ah. <laughs> And you know what? I'm going to tell you, it's you very see, different. You see, now I'm starting it's to think you, you, you're the type of young lady that'll go to the pool hall acting like you don't know how to play until money gets on the table. See? <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> I, had to. I, I went into a venue. This was years ago, and I was first starting out with my own band mm-hmm. in 2002, probably like a couple years after that. And... I went in and I said, hey, I'd like to book a gig here at your place. And, you know, they looked at me and were like, okay, who are you? And the one barmaid said, I know her. That's Miss Freddie. She can really sing. So her boss, you know, he's like, well, leave your CD here. I said, well, do you have a CD player? He said, no. I said, well, I'll tell you what. Why don't I sing something? He's like, okay. I said, do you like Etta James? And he said, yeah. I said, well, how about if I sing Either at last, I'd rather go blind. And the barman said, oh, you should hear her sing. I sang, I did a cappella. I sang, I'd rather go blind. Mm. <laughs> and then, jazz, I was at a venue, another venue with another, you know, these guys. And I said, oh, I should book my band here. And the owner's like, well, we like jazz. I said, well, I do blues. I said, but how about if I do something jazzy for you? Mm. So I sat in with the band songs and I took some songs and I twisted them in jazz formation. He's like, I thought you were a blues singer. I said, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but these guys do jazz. I don't think they know any blues songs that I know. Mm. So um, it's, it's very difficult, but I have an appreciation for it. And I have a number of um, musician friends, male and female, that do jazz, and I commend them. Yeah, I love listening to it. To yeah. do it, I probably would have to be trained in it years. In years. Well, it sounds like you can do it to me, but you know, and you know, you, one of your your inspirations, your singing inspiration, Sarah Vaughan, she danced uh-huh. the fine line between blues and jazz. Yeah, she's right. You know, she's absolutely right. The progression is different. Yeah, but she's absolutely right because I have taken some cover songs. Mm-hmm. And I've done them in a jazz formation, and I'm telling you, they were swinging, they were happening. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm loving this. I'm like, wait, I sing blues, but it doesn't matter. But you're you're absolutely right, and she um, she did both, mm-hmm. and I just absolutely love her. May she rest in peace, man. In, yes, yes. So coming on to your blues, let's talk about your blues project. What what's going on? with Miss Freddie and her blues right now? Well, Miss Freddie is getting ready for a number of um, blues festivals on top of local stuff. Um, you know, every year we do at least two big blues dances that happens here in Pittsburgh. We did one. It's called the Still City Blues Fest. We're getting ready to go to Washington, D.C. this weekend to do the, let me get this right, Red Hot Blues and Barbecue festival it's mm. a three weekend big dance thing where they have djs and bands mm. and it's nothing but blues nothing but blues mm. um and uh you know we're going to be in charleston west virginia again um i started doing music in school did one down in charleston and did one in greensburg pennsylvania mm. um and the kids loved it the kids absolutely loved it <laughs> and it's my first time doing it Wow. Um, but this might this might uh, make everybody's eyebrows raise up. I'm getting ready to go in the studio. I was trying to keep it under wraps, but I'm getting ready to go in the studio and do a gospel CD, lay down some tracks in September. Well, look here now. That's the blues, too. Yes, it is. Yes, yes it is. Mahalia Jackson, uh, Mavel Sta- uh, Mavis Staples, them blues yes. singers, <laughs> James Cle- Reverend James Cleland, them yep. blues singers. <laughs> yep. They, yep. Yep. They, they just are. was talking about God. <laughs> That's right. Yes, they are. You know, and they lay it down. That's what I'm getting ready to do. And then in the spring, 2017, uh, 
I'm going to uh, put all the, I'm going to go in the studio and lay down some tracks for blue CD. Mm. So, yeah, the gospel's first. You know, I was trying to figure out which one I want to do first. And, you know, I was talking to this uh, choir out of Apollo, PA, Mm -hmm. and they're wonderful. They're young folks. And we did uh, the song called This Train Mm. at a a music festival, you know. uh, And I'm telling you, we did an a cappella, and I said, huh, I really love what they do. And they were so uplifting. The audience loved what they did when they did their song. I'm telling you, Mm. it, it was And I talked to their music director, and she was kind of skeptical. And I said, you know what? We will be all right when we do this show. We were. So I uh, texted her, and I said, hey, April, you guys are interested in doing something on the CD with me? And she was ecstatic. (laughs) Nice. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, so I'm excited. I've got different musicians. My band, both my bands are going to be doing something. I've got... um, Friend out of West Virginia, he's going to be doing something. I got some Pittsburgh musicians. Um, I'll be getting a hold of a couple friends that I know, you know, females. I've got a harmonica player out in California, Dr. B. He's actually coming to uh, with me at one of the festivals down in Berkeley, West Virginia. Nice. Beckley, West Virginia. Um, so that's my project. You know, well, I mean, that's big. Schools and laying down tracks. <laughs> So, well, when when people hear your music, your original music, when when they what what is it that you want them to receive? How how do you want them to feel? I want them to feel like I'm relating to them, especially when I sing. These are my blues, mm. um, because it reflects on, okay, I've made it to this point. God has brought me to this point. So let me just reflect on what's been happening in my life. Right. You know, you know mm-hmm. um, that's what I want them to receive, and I want them to feel. When I do All the Woman in the Shoe, it, it's funny, <laughs> <laughs> because the way I talk about it, you know, um, a lot of people can relate to it, men and women. Right. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what culture. They can all relate to it because people come up. I like that song. Yeah, I can tell you a story sometime, and I'm like, well, that's what it's all about. Right. Getting the dialogue started. To, that's right. We're supposed to be able to share stories, but you know, um, my most infamous story, and I, it, it's not long. This young lady, I was singing at a venue one night, and I'm a nurse, and uh, this nurse came in. She's dressed in all white, you know, and mm-hmm. the band was playing. I, you know, I noticed because she's the only one, you know, in the venue, all white. Everybody else had blue jeans on, whatever. So she stayed the whole night. And she came up and she said, oh, I want to thank you so much, Miss Freddie. I said, you're welcome. I said, you're a fellow nurse. I said, yay. <laughs> we were talking. And she said, I want to tell you thank you again. I said, oh, honey, that's no problem. You're welcome. This is what I do. And she said, the reason why I'm thanking you is because I found out my husband was cheating on me, and I came in here to get me a stiff drink long enough to go home and kill him. Wow. You know, I don't know. I think the blood left my body, and I must have had an out-of-body experience or something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I said, oh, Lord. And I told her, I said, well, you know, you go home, and, you know, you think about it, but, you know, she had a child. So, you know, for weeks I was watching the news. <laughs> so she comes. You know, because I said, oh, God, am I going to be like a witness or something? Are they going to call me? (laughs) Into (laughs) court? Yes. You know, I said, I don't want to testify, please. But I said, I'm going to have to. A few months later, same girl, uniform, all white, come in. Stayed the whole night. She came up to me. She said, I'm going to thank you. Do you remember me? I said, absolutely. I didn't see you on the news. And she started laughing. She said, no. I went home. I told my husband. You know, I said, I found out that you're cheating on me. She said, I took the baby and I left. And, you know, this was several years ago. She left him, divorced him, remarried, had a couple more kids, and she is happy. Mm. And she said it was that night she came in to hear the band. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, changing lives with the blues. <laughs> that's right. Mm. You know, and my and, and I have nieces and nephews that, you know, they never had heard me before years ago. And they're like, oh, the blues is sad. It's slow. It's who wants that? And I said, huh, 
So you all need to come out and hear me sometime. So most of them have, and they're like, Aunt Freddie, we didn't know you did that. I said, I tried to tell y'all, all All music is not sad and pitiful. It's just, you know, this is just what I do and what I have learned growing up. Right, that's right, that's right. And see, and that's that's a real misconception because it's sad is not the right word. It's just trials and tribulations of life and love and, and, and things of this nature. So I so I, I kind of frown on the term sad because I guess it could be taken that way because it, some people say it's complaining and it's I don't think it's complaining I think it's expression of a moment sometimes it sounds funny but when in the midst of like just now perfect example that could be a song the way you just described that and I'm laughing hysterically but it's not funny it's actually sad. And it's also, at the end, rejoiceful. And that's what the blues is. That's right. That's exactly right. You know, and I tell people because, you know, it's funny you say that. And and I say that to say this. I have had people who they introduce me to their friends. Oh, she's a great jazz singer. And I'm like, okay, come on, you guys. I said, you know, it all came from the blues at one time if we're going to talk about American history music. Right. Okay. And it just branched out into different, you know, genres of music. But I said, make no mistake, I'm not a jazz singer. Mm. And I tell people, here's the difference between jazz and blues. And I'll do a little something. I'll scat. And I said, okay, now here's blues. And I'll do something. And they're like, oh, yeah. I'm like, mm. I said, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I said, it's an education because you need to know who I am as a person, as a musician. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you have to, you know, I, I have no problem doing, I, I've done country. I did rock last year, you know, with these kids, and I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, y'all know I'm going to have to go to the gym every day and work out every day. Thank God I quit smoking in 98. Wow. And they laugh at me. They're like, Miss Freddie, you did wonderful. I said, mm mm. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not afraid. Mm. But I know where I come from as far as music. Right. And I've done country, I've done bluegrass, I've taken, I sang with these young kids. It's always young folks. They did bluegrass. I said, Why well, do blues? I said, Let's do something we all know. Mm-hmm. So we did something. And I'm telling you, it gave me a new appreciation mm. of where and how music began and what's going on and how there are a lot of folks in this world who are trying to stay true to what happened years ago as far as music. Right, right. You giving giving you almost the the authentic, not even almost, giving you the authentic sound and feeling. Right. Mm, mm. Now, you spoke about um, a blues society out there by you. Now, what... Oh, yeah. What talk about them and the role they played in the success of your blues career? You got four hours. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are called the Blue Society of Western Pennsylvania, and our current president is Johnny Weber. Hey, Johnny. <laughs> um, and their whole goal, and I'm thinking this is all blues society, especially people that I have met. Um, throughout my um, life as a blues musician Mm -hmm. is to keep the blues alive, keep it going. They do a lot as far as supporting our Pittsburgh Food Bank. Um, This as far as music. They do a lot as far as um, blues in the school. Right. You know, um, they gave me my first shot at blues in the school at Greensburg, PA. Went to the elementary school, and I'm telling you, those kids just, I told the teachers, you're going to have to deprogram it, and they have the, they have the wild, crazy look on their face. They're like, what do you mean? I said, just calm down. They're kids. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I know how to deal with it. Just ask my nieces and nephews. But um, they also, uh, we also, like every blues society in the United States and probably overseas, they always have a local blues competition, which I have participated in a few times. Mm. Um down to Memphis, Tennessee for the International Blues Competition, you know, representing their uh, Blues Society. Right. Um, 
they also support a lot of the, uh, the shows, the musicians, the local musicians, because we're trying to keep that local blues, you know, alive right. and supporting our local musicians. And, you know, they have a big New Year's Eve party. They bring in um, a national act, but they have a local band opening for it. And that's what I really, I love that about them. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what culture we are because we all have this, like, same thing. Like, we love blues. This is what we want to hear. Um, so I'm trying to think. They definitely are starting to get into uh, bringing the young people on board. And when I say young people, I'm talking about those folks under 30 and under. Wow. All the way up to the little kids. Well, they you need know? to know. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And there's one young man, I'm telling you, and you can uh, look him up on YouTube, Shylin Abram. Okay. He, this child, you know, when I first met him, he opened up for me, oh my goodness, uh, several years ago. Mm. And it was at a restaurant I was playing with the trio. And the guy came up and he said, hey, there's this young man, he plays keyboard, do you mind if he, you know, does something? I said, I have no problem with it. I said, because number one, when I leave this planet, when I ain't here no more, he's going to be here. Right, right. You know something? I just, I found a new appreciation for, oh my goodness, you know, somebody, somebody please appreciate this young man. Wow. He blew me away. He blew me absolutely away. And I talked to his mom, you know, mm -hmm, and he's a mm -hmm. special needs individual. Wow. And he's intelligent. He loves music. He is phenomenal. And now he's in a band called Soul Radio. Wow. And it's him and two, let's see, him, a bass player, guitar player. Those kids are phenomenal in drummer. Those kids are phenomenal. Mm. Mm. They are phenomenal. And blues, huh? <laughs> I said, <laughs> I think those are like, you know, you know, I swear they're reincarnated like musicians from like the 20s and 30s. I wow. Said, this is impossible. Hey, so let me ask you a question. The schools, and then I want you to please continue because I want to know how the, the, the Blue Society helped you. But you mentioned blues in the schools, and I'm very aware of this program. And I, I ask everybody this, so please don't feel on the spot. Oh, no, I won't. The schools that you guys go to, uh, are any of them predominantly African-American? Do you even go, or what's, what's going on? The first time, the first time I did it um, back in March this year, it was um, it was predominantly uh, Caucasian. And okay. That was okay. Mm -hmm, yeah. that, that doesn't bother me because I didn't see color. I never do when I do music. Right. And when I went in there, I told my guys, I said, "Look, these are kids. They're already being taught. Who in the world wants to be taught?" This is supposed to be sharing of music. Mm. Now, I'm going to tell you something. So I asked the kids, okay, what kind of music do you like? I said, I've got these different musics. I said, who likes rock? Who likes gospel? Who likes country? Who likes, you know, and a lot of hands went up. I said, well, okay, what about blues? Half the class. It was very interesting. Hmm. And then I said, okay, you know who the Beatles are? They're like, yeah, we know. I'm like, okay. And then I said, who knows who Robert Johnson was? And there was three kids. Wow. Two girls and one boy. They wow. all played guitar. Okay, that explains it. <laughs> <laughs> they all played guitar. I'm like, thank you. And when I went to Charleston, West Virginia, uh, back in, I think, we, yeah, we did in April, it was predominantly African American. How was that? It, it was two hundred kids, and I and I took the electric band. Mm -hmm. so it was the five of us. So it was two hundred kids, and so I met the music director, and I'm like, okay. And it was through the Charleston, uh, West Virginia Blues Society. Mm. They sponsored us, brought us down here. And I said, told my guys, we're going to have to approach this differently. It's 200 kids. We're in this room. I'm like, oh, you know. <laughs> and again, the kids, and I had to, and they, they've never done it. The, the full band never did this before. Right. I said, this is not about music instruction. This is about sharing what we do. And I did. I did the same thing. Who all likes music? 
Do you listen to music when you're sad? Do you listen to music when you're angry? I did the whole emotional thing because I wanted them to get to know me. Mm -hmm. I got them up dancing. I said, we're going to do some dancing. And I said, we might do, I said, and then I need a couple people who know how to rap or who does poetry. And I said, you know where that came from? A few of the kids said, it came from blues. I'm mm. like, wow, really? Good. I said, name me a blues artist. So they started naming people, B.B. King and Stevie Ray Vaughan. Somebody said Delbert McClinton. Somebody said Bonnie Ray. I said, she's a good slide guitarist. She is. She very, said, definitely but, is. Yeah, and I said, but who else? One kid stood up, tall kid, said, Robert Johnson. I'm like, you must be a guitar player. He said, no, my dad is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I bust out laughing. I said, honey, I'm not laughing at you. I said, I'm laughing at the love of music. Yeah. And the kids loved it. Yeah. And it was no different. The only difference was the color, the culture. Right. I'm not even going to say color. I'm going to say culture. The culture. Well, see, I, I, the reason why I asked not to um, differentiate or, or to, to, to be divisive or anything of, like this, I asked because it, um, most younger um, white, audience, white kids would know who some of these people are because their parents tend to go to these festivals. Right? right, most younger black audiences would know as far as David Ruffins and Motown. Some special would know the Robert Johnsons, the Howlin' Wolves, right. you know, and um, 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 the Ray Charles, for that matter. But right. I, I have my concern. My con yes, my concern is that the, the young African American children understand that it's it's more than just great music. This is part of your existence in this. Actually, I, I'll I'll take um I'll take it a step further. I'll be ballsy right now. And say mm -hmm. that <laughs> this you is. You know, somebody's gonna write a song about it. <laughs> hey, all right, let's go. Look, <clears throat> this this they they need to understand that American music was birthed on the backs of your ancestors in in a very 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 horrible time. So you know, it's not even to just harbor on the horrible time, which needs to be discussed. But they need to know their connection to why pop music is and sounds the way it is and where right. it came from and, and right. their connection to it. You know, I right. speak about this all the time. There was this uh, cat, this young brother I met. He was uh, Jewish. He was Israeli Jewish, um, okay. European Jewish. And um, he, was, he was telling me that his, his grandmother had, books like nine or ten books of from hers her, her parents i believe up until his parents or him from the holocaust to here and i was like wow man what is, are you gonna you know sell this and make a lot of money he was like i could but actually i, I want to hold this until one day i may get married and have children this is something I need to give them at a certain age. And I said, exactly. Yes. Yes. Right. And that's what the blues is for us. That's right. And so that's why I asked that question. Not to be divisive, but that's right. for our children, that's what that is. Right. And that's why I love... And I'm going to love it because I've only done it twice. But places that I have done shows that, that are family friendly. Mm. And you can have all different cultures there because I have had all different cultures and they've had their kids. And I've had the kids get up on the stage and I might do something that very basic, simple blues song. Mm -hmm. And the kids love it. They love getting on the stage. They love learning. They'll ask my guys in the band, you know, about their instruments. And when I take that music into the school, I tell, for example, like both, you know, both schools, I told the kids, 
I said, you're being taught anyway. I want to share what is happening. Mm. And I said, the next time you see me, I'm going to do a little skit. and I'm going to take a period of blues history. And I'm going to do a little skit. It'll be just me. I'll be a one woman show with my guys playing some kind of a music. Right. And you'll be able to understand that time period. And that's, you know, I, I agree. I think our African Americans, And I know there are a lot out there who do understand and who do realize where um, where blues, you know, how blues has formatted into, you know, what is going on today. And that's fine because mm-hmm. I remember listening to the music when I was a kid. Right. Because the music that my parents listened to, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, that's that old stuff. We got this <laughs> new stuff. It's happier, and I get that. Right. But what I grew up getting finally is, well, where did this come from? How did this all get started? Mm. And I found out, and at my age, I'm still finding out. I I really am. And I know it's important for me to share that knowledge. I'm not trying to be greedy and keep nothing. I can share my (laughs) knowledge, you know, what I know, what I have learned. But then it's for them to go out. And to seek the knowledge and be thirsty for the knowledge. Mm, so you're leading them to the well. Exactly. Now tell me something. You made a clear distinction between teach and share. Could you please elaborate on why that's important? Um, I think... Being somebody who loves to go to school, I love school, Mm -hmm. but also having a child or two who didn't like school, (laughs) (laughs) and it wasn't the fact that school itself was just sitting there and just, you know, okay, I'm going to teach you this, teach you this, you know, Um, it's important. I'm teaching in a way that they don't, they don't realize that they're being taught when Mm. I'm sharing what I do as a musician. Mm. Mm. Um, and I think that's important because yes, I'm an adult. Yes. Okay. I'm a woman. So kids, uh, and I'm not stereotyping male or female, right. do not take me seriously because I'm an adult and okay, you're a woman, so I don't have to listen to you. Right, right. <laughs> So I think it's important. I think teaching is, teaching is great. But I have learned sitting in a classroom myself, you know, and I've had professors and teachers in college and when I was in high school, middle school, you know, they were great. I love coming to their class because it was so animated. And they were still sharing, they were still teaching what they have learned to teach me, but they were doing it in a way that I've got to remember this. Mm. I've got to seek out why this is happening. I want to know more about it. Mm. I dig it. I dig it. And I hope you guys are taking lessons and notes right now. because <laughs> <laughs> No, because it's serious. It's serious. It, you, oh, yeah. It, you know, it, just for, on so many levels, cultural, spiritual, um, you know, just on so many levels, sharing your music affects people it saved someone's life and also took someone's life to a happier place because i'm sure that woman's husband who she left is happy he's still living (laughs) right (laughs) you know oh oh i'm oh i'm sure i'm sure um it um it saved me because four years ago um um, in a couple months, four years ago, my uh, my boyfriend passed away. Oh, man. He had, went in the hospital April, never came out, never got better, you know. And as a nurse, you know, it's like, why? Why do I have to go through this? And I actually was booking gigs every weekend, and I was working. Um, I was doing my bedside nursing, mm-hmm. and I was working two twelve, two eight-hour shifts a week, so that's four days a week. And then I would go over to the hospital and see him. Um, and there was a two-week period that I didn't, but I said, I got to go back. I got to go back. 
something's right. And, you know, I did that in my guitar player, my electric band. I, the night that um, I, they, the doctors were saying, we don't think he's going to make it. I'll never forget. It was uh, probably like April, four years ago. Mm. And my guitar player and I entered as a uh, duo act. And he said, you don't have to do this if you don't want to sit. No, I have to do this. I have to get out of the hospital. I said, but I'm gonna, when I'm done with the competition, I'm leaving. I'm not staying, mm -hmm. no after party. I don't care who won. I need to get back. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I, you know what? I, I, try, I don't realize my own emotions sometimes. And we got up there and we did about, we had to do 20 minutes worth of songs. And I'm telling you. Mm. My guitar player looked at me. He had the strength. And I said, I must not be singing right. I must be. I said, oh, God, you know, you got to give me strength. I got to get out of here. Mm. So, you know, we, I stayed around. Some people came. They're like, oh, my God, you know, you were good. I said, really? So my guitar <laughs> player was looking at me like I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, they announced it, and we won for the solo duo. Wow. And I couldn't believe it. And he's like, he's like, Freddie, he said, I've never heard you sing like that. And I told him, I said, well, I said, you know what's going on. And I said, you know, I think I'll just stay. I'll, I'll, I'll just stay now. Usually, you know, I'm running out. And, but, and I stayed and I felt better. But I'm telling you, if it wasn't for music, I, I don't know. I don't know what kind of state of mind I'd have been in today. Because it tore me apart watching him, I think, suffering. Right. Um, but when he finally passed away, it's like, you know what? I don't know how people feel, but I said I'm so glad because I said I I don't I I can't imagine that. And I'm a nurse, and I have seen death. I've seen people shot. I've seen everything you can imagine being a nurse. Mm. But to watch somebody that you love very much suffer like that, I think music saved me, saved my mental, my spiritual. Mm. You know, yeah. So I dig it. That's the blues, sister. That's the blues. Oh, yeah. Oh, I got some stories. And when I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, my mom passed away. My One of my nephews was murdered last year. Mm. And I'm telling you, you know, I had to give a speech for Center for Victims. And I don't even remember the speech. I just, it just came off the top of my head, out of my heart. Right. And I said some things about what I went through. You know, I was abused. Mm. You know, okay. I was like, I mean, I, I told people, I said, I, there's a lot of stuff that I went through through this life that a lot of people probably would have killed themselves. They'd have probably turned to some kind of addiction. Right. I said, but I couldn't do that. Mm -mm. I, I just, I couldn't do it. You know, I kept the music in my heart. And then finally, when I got into being a musician, you know, it was no stopping me. I said, I got a story to tell and I got to keep it real. That's keep right. Right. That's right. Mm. Amen. <laughs> you know, that also, that's also in scripture. It's not what you put in the body in terms of food, but what comes out of the heart, which determines if you're righteous or not. So I'm digging that's it. Right. Well, I, I just have to say it was such an honor. And we got to get you back on this show because we still got more to talk about. <laughs> Dig it, you heard it right here. Until the next time, good folks, you know what it is. Keep God first and keep on blues. To hear archives of the Talking About the Blues podcast interviews, go to the Talking About the Blues YouTube channel. And while you're there, subscribe to that channel. Talking About the Blues podcast is hosted and produced by Lamont Jack Purley. Production manager, Denise Mrs. Deep Hurley. All rights reserved to talking about the blues.